Today on the Tomarosa, we are going to talk about birds, including birds of prey and also birds that we encourage for biodiversity. I have loved watching birds for quite a while, so I'm super excited to have so many birds on our farm. We have raptors, songbirds, grass nesting birds, also upland game birds, and of course they all do different things. The raptors help us control the rodents and the different other birds help us control different insects and of course they're just pretty to look at and to hear. This past winter we built a couple of bird boxes to increase different bird species on our farm. These are the bird box plans that we used to build our bird boxes. You can find these pretty easy on the internet. One of the things that fascinated me was how fast the bird boxes were used. Other than the large boxes I put up for the northern flickers, the smaller boxes were used pretty much right away. I didn't know if they would be used this first season or not. So I was pretty happy to see that they were used pretty quickly by the swallows and the western bluebirds. One of the bird species that we wanted to increase on our farm was the western bluebird. We're happy to say that the Western Bluebird did use this bird box this year to raise more bluebirds. Now it's time to open it up and clean out the old nest to get it ready for this year. I looked online for how to clean out bird boxes and I found that you just wanted to use a tool to clean them out and you wanted to use protective gear to protect yourself from any possible infectious material in the bird nests. And then you could use a solution of either bleach or another soapy solution, or in my case, I chose to use vinegar water. And then you just leave the box uh, a chance to air out and to dry on a day that's not gonna be raining, and it should be good to go. Another trick I would share is if you have fine material in the bottom of the bird box that you wanna get rid of, and it's kind of a windy day, you can always wet it down with the solution and then kind of scrape it out. That's kind of, what they do with trying to keep down dust when you're working with removing lead or asbestos. So I'm doing that with the bottom of this bird box. We also had a bunch of violet green swallows this year on our farm. And we had three boxes that the swallows nested in. This is one of them. My final two bird boxes that I need to clean out are for northern flickers. They're bigger and they are on a higher pole. When I built these, the instructions said to fill them with pine shavings and that the bird would burrow into them and make their own nest. I've not checked them and I haven't really been able to tell if anything nested in them. So this will be the first time that I bring down these bird boxes and we'll discover together what's in them. Okay, I managed to get that down, mostly without almost harming myself. I don't know if I'll be able to get it up by myself. <laughs> it may be down until my husband gets here next weekend, but it does look like something might have nested in there. Let's go check it out. So here is the top of the box. You can see how I had it packed with the pine shavings. But when you look in the hole, I'll try to shine a flashlight in you can kind of make out how it has been excavated on the inside. So something tried to get in there. I'm gonna pull it out and see if there's any kind of nest in there. Okay, I'm down to the area where it had been hollowed out. It was kind of hard to tell. 
It looked like it had just been hollowed out. I don't know if uh, anything had actually nested in here. I have excavated the entire inside of this box and there was nothing else in here, just the shavings. So I'm contemplating not even putting the shavings back in the box and seeing if something is able to nest in it. I'm also contemplating whether or not I can get this up all by myself. Alright, I'm just going to try to put this up. On top of putting up bird boxes, we have also worked on increasing our natural habitats by planting trees and bushes. These will also provide cover and food. We definitely have pocket gophers as well as field mice and probably lots of other types of rodents on our farm. However, we choose to work with other raptors to have them help us with our populations. We do that by putting up raptor perches and also keeping some areas mowed so that the raptors can have access to these rodents. One of my favorite stories is the fact that when Mount St. Helens erupted, one of the only life that managed to survive was the pocket gopher. So I figure if mother nature cannot smite out the pocket gopher, I really don't have a lot of chance using traps and poisons. Plus that really doesn't go along with our ethos on our farm. And so we are gonna work with the raptors. So far we have been successful keeping down our populations and we're gonna continue in this manner. This is our wonderful Charlie Brown tree. It's a Douglas fir. It's been hit a couple of times by lightning. One of the great things about this tree is that a lot of raptors use it as a perch for hunting and then they also use it when they are regurgitating what is called owl pellets. And an owl pellet are the pieces of rodents that they cannot digest. So usually around this tree are about on average around 20 different owl pellets. Here's the inside of one. You can see the furry bits. There's some bone. And it's, so if you see these on the ground, now you know what they are. It also lets me know what kind of things that the raptors are killing on our farm and how successful they are being. I just wanted to zoom in here. I don't know if you can make it out, but these are the front teeth, it looks like, of a gopher maybe? That's kind of cool. Here are some owl pellets that have started to disintegrate by themselves on the ground. These are our raptor perches that we have seen being used and I have seen our red-tailed hawks and some American kestrels on them. I have found owl pellets and also lots of bird excrement around them. So I'm glad that they have been successful. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, here is our house building update. I'm just gonna tack it on to the end of this video. We are getting our drywall installed and that is gonna take place at the end of February. I've also made sure that our spray foam sample actually made it to the company and the report is being drafted. Hopefully I'll have an update on how that went through and we can move forward on that. Otherwise, it doesn't look like anything else really is going to happen with the house until we get into March. But things will rapidly happen after that. This year we have a lot of great things going on. So make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss any of our videos. And we will see you next time on the Tomarosa.